Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from North Flight Images. And um, in this video, I'm going to do a follow up from one I did a while ago about ditching my Canon 5DS, my trusty 5DS, which I've had since 2015, and what to replace it with. Um, I want to thank everybody for the number of comments and emails um, that came in about making such a choice. And I'm still going to say to most people, I'm going to suggest take a great deal of care if you're thinking of changing camera systems. Um, there is a lot of grass looking greener on the other side of the fence in this area. Now, when I uh, mentioned things, I, I went through a whole load of different systems. I've been testing the Fuji GFX 100S over the last few months. I've had one on occasions. But the key thing is yesterday Nikon announced the Z8 now, Z8 looks a superb camera. From my point of view, though, it's similar, probably better in some respects than the Canon R5. Um, I've already got Canon lenses, bits and pieces. Now, that's not so much of a problem because the Nikon Z mount, one of the things I said about it is it's really great to adapt things to. It's a well-designed mount and I, I rather like it, uh, you know, from a technical point of view as much as anything. Um, so thanks again as if for the comments. Well, most of the comments. One person wrote to me and explained why, in great detail, why my still using lenses like my old EF70 to 200 2.8L IS lens that I bought in 2004, why this was utterly hopeless, even for my 5DS. They also went through and mentioned several other of my lenses, which were no good for a camera like this, which obviously must mean they're no good for any cameras whatsoever these days. I thought, I'm so glad that they told me that just recently, rather than the eight years I've been using this camera for my professional photography, architectural photography, industrial photography, stuff like that. Um, if only I'd known. Um, for example, this EF50 f1.4, this lens dates back years. Um, I use this for quite technical verified view photography. Um, and where well, you need to know the focal length, you need to specify the lens and things. It's quite technical service. It, it's something that we do where you, you, you measure get GPS, you measure the position of the camera, the height of the camera, all kinds of technical requirements to do with it. I've been using this and clients have been quite happy with it. Uh, now I know better. Uh, so that's it. Apparently all this stuff um, I need to ditch and get. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm sure you've come across stuff like this. Um, I thanked the person politely and uh, said that I had some disagreement with their calculations. Um, but enough of that. Another thing, I had a lot of people ask me why I was ruling out Sony. And it is because Sony cameras with Sony lenses and lenses designed for Sony's E-mount are very good. But there are no tilt-shift lenses for that mount. And because of the narrowness of the mount, to put on an adapter, you would get mount vignetting. And I don't want that. So I'm sorry, no matter how good Sony's camera is with their other lenses, if it won't work with tilt shift lenses that I've got here, that are a vital part of my work, then no, um, I can't use it. Now I use tilt shift lenses a lot. Um, no apologies now, I plug my book on how to use tilt shift lenses. I still believe it's the only book that covers all about using these. But anyway, advert out of the way there. Um, they're an integral part of what I do as a photographer. And that is one of the things that I've had to look at as a result of this. I looked at this Z8, lovely camera. If I was, um, you know, if I did work that would benefit from it, if I did video professionally, lots of other things, if I did sports, stuff that required good autofocus performance, recording you know, high, you know, high quality video, then that's great. So is the R5, it's showing an, its age perhaps in comparison now to this. But no, um, it doesn't quite cut it. Um, yes, very nice. If they'd have done this at 60 odd megapixels, I might have been a little bit more interested. But I suspect that that will come. Um, this was perhaps intended to be a mini Z9. Uh, it shows where Nikon is going um, and yeah, it's good. They've got some great cameras. Yeah. 
Uh, another camera I'd mentioned I'd looked at for was the Panasonic S1R. Now I used this, tested it, tested it with an adapter, uh, it's L mount. Um, I tested it with an adapter on several of my tilt shift lenses, including some of the more, the newer, more expensive Canon ones, uh, the 5090, 135, and it's excellent. The pixel shift works really well, even outdoors. Um, there are modes where you, you lose some of the resolution, but it's a smart combining. I hope to see the likes of Fuji, certainly Canon and anyone else producing better options for multi-image you know, multi stitching. It does work. I have got a use for it. Um, now, the use for it is more in the studio for macro work and things like that, but it's certainly something I considered. But once again, it was several years ago that I tested the S1R and there's no new version of that on the horizon as I can see it yet. So that's not an option. Smaller sensor, and I had one or two people suggest that I move to uh, four thirds. Um, no, it's not gonna happen. Uh, if I'm gonna move anywhere, it's gonna be to a larger sensor. He says, pointing that general direction. That's more likely for it, for the kind of work. And there is the key to it. I say for the kind of work. What this process has made me do, it's made me look at all of my photography. That's the stuff that makes me money, the stuff that I enjoy, all kinds of photography. It's made me look at it and what I actually needed for that, what I'd got, whether getting something new was any difference. And that's why um, I'm going to say that most likely I'm going to move to a larger format. I haven't decided for certain yet, but the larger sensor there with the kind of work I do, that is the stuff that makes us more money and it differentiates some aspects of my photography from competitors. And that's what I've got to do. So from a business point of view, and this makes it easy in some ways compared with a lot of people, this is why I say be careful about consider, consider any considerations of changing mounts. The business side pushes that direction because there are benefits. I've already talked to one client and said, would it have been helpful if I was to supply some images at even higher resolution? And they went, yes, um, because not a problem of what I provide, even though, as I say, I've been told that my lenses are clearly inadequate for, for this camera, not a problem with that, but that um, it would give them more capabilities in cropping and using the images. Uh, now, most commercial clients would not know what to do if you sent them 100 megapixel images. You know, they really would not want stuff sending like that. But there are ones who do, and they pay for it as well, and they're quite happy to pay for it because they know what they want. That is one of the reasons you'll see people suggest getting larger medium format kit. Yeah, Hasselblad, phase one. That's some of the stuff... Uh, that's why people look at things like that. From a financial point of view, though, the costs of such stuff is exorbitant. Um, I can possibly run to a few thousand pounds for a new camera. I cannot run to 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 for a new camera. We do not have the work that could fund that or that the prospect of work that would repay that form of investment. So it's looking at investments. So in a way, uh, what has driven me forward most is what can I, flexibility with this and what can I get out of it? Now, that takes me towards the GFX. Not this, even though for general purpose use, I suspect this would be a far more versatile camera for most people than that one. But then again, a lot of people wouldn't want necessarily here. Uh, they might consider something like Hasselblad, the X1D Mark II that I've got sitting here. Um, yeah, they might do that, but then you don't get adapters from these lenses very easily to go onto something like this. These lenses have shutters in them. Um, I kind of work I do doesn't get a benefit from that. Um, so there you have it. Um, I welcome any more comments. Thank you for everyone who's engaged with this um, and as such has found some of the other related stuff I've done, uh, both the written articles and obviously the videos. But uh, yeah, um, I'm still thinking about it. I haven't got the credit cards out yet, so we're still open for it. But um, certainly 
if I can't use one of these, then that's not an option. And oh, and by the way, bonus point for anyone who can identify my camera sitting here. It's an old one I picked up a while ago, an Olympus E20P, um, five megapixels. I really must, I've, I've got the battery, it does still work. Um, few bits of it seems to not to have aged too well in some of the fittings and things, but I must take it out and take some photographs with it at some point. Uh, it was a very nice little camera, even though you could only take three or four fo photos in RAW in a burst before you had to sit and wait for a while till it wrote things to the card. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it's of interest and please do let me know your thoughts on this sort of thing. So thanks. And well, oh, please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. Cheers. Bye.